Hi, it's uh, Rondo back again from Funky Freaks. Today we're going to be working an applique that you can use to add to baby blankets or um, garments, clothing, scarves, anything really. It's a teddy bear face and here's the finished result. This one's quite cute. This one's made in cotton and as you can see I've added it to a little baby matinee jacket which I've made in an uh, Egyptian cotton. So we'll get started. This is the um, first one I made which was in acrylic. Now um, you'll notice it will be a little bit bigger. The acrylic is a bit thicker than what I'm going to be using here. This isn't an Egyptian cotton, it's quite a lot finer. Um, this one's just a plain cotton which I've used for the eyes. But I'll use um, the caramel colour I think for the main face. This is the brand, the Rowan Summerlight 4 Ply. And I don't know if you can see the details very clearly here. I've chosen today though um, to use a 3mm hook which tends to complement the thickness of this yarn quite nicely. And a pair of scissors. And a darning needle. Okay, so we'll get started on this little fellow and we'll look at doing the um, base of the face first. I've um, seen a Slipknot um, on YouTube the other day, I can't remember where I saw it, it might have been at the beginning of a project, where you wrap the yarn around your finger and just cross it over and hold it down and then pull that uh, loose end uh, back over the top of your finger and hold that down again as well. And then while you're doing that, just pull the other loop over the top. It makes a, a cute little slip knot. Now the reason for mentioning this is um, we're going to. I'm going to start with a, a magic ring. Um, or you could also start with a three chain loop, but that's an, a neat little um, slip knot. <laughs> and then you would make some chains. And then once you've done your chains, you would slip to the first chain um, to make a little ring. Um, this is the way I would normally make a, a slip knot myself. So I'm using the caramel yarn here the caramel colour in the Egyptian cotton. So I've got my slip knot which I'm placing on my hook. Just tighten the right end up first. And then make a series of chain stitches. That's one. Two. Three, four, and then I'm going to slip stitch back into the first stitch that I made. Closing the loop to, to make a, for all intents and purposes, this works like a magic ring. And then you can work into the very centre of that loop. It's a very tiny hole there. So to begin, we're going to chain up three. And then work a double crochet into the center of the ring that we've made. And as long as you work over that tail yarn, you can pull that tail yarn through at the end of your work and that pulls up the hole quite tightly, just like a magic ring does. So there's our first double crochet. A second double crochet, three, four, five. Seven, eight, nine, ten. 
Tuhan. Eleven. Twelve. So the, the chain three at the beginning won't count. Sometimes it does in patterns, so you just need to be aware of that. So just counting around, we have 12 double crochets. I want to count back to the very first because I'm going to slip stitch into that first double crochet. I'm not slip stitching into the top of the chain here. I'm slip stitching into that first double crochet that we made. And there we go, that's the end of our first round. Pull that tail yarn up. Like I said, that closes that little hole. So as long as you're working over the top of that yarn, that will work as a magic ring. So if you haven't been able to master the magic ring, a chain three uh, circle will work just as well. Okay, round two. I'm going to chain three again. And this time we're going to count the chain three. We're going to work back into the same space and make a double crochet. So we have two double crochets in that space. Then we're working into the next stitch. There's our first double crochet and our second double crochet back in the same space. Then we'll work the next stitch. So that's your pattern. It's two double crochet into each stitch around. So we had 12 double crochet in our first round. We will have 24 double crochet by the time we've worked all the way around. Okay, so I'm coming to the end. I'm working my last um, double crochet here and this time because we counted our chain stitch we're going to slip stitch into the top of the chain. Oh, sorry, I've come off camera. There we go. That's round two. Round three, we're going to chain three again. There we go. And we're going to work back into that same space with another double crochet. And then into the next stitch here. Sorry, I just need to get that yarn out of the way. Pull a bit more yarn out. So into the very next stitch here, it, it's um, a little bit misshapen because of the double crochet that I've put into the chain space, but uh, it is there, you'll see the two V's there. If in doubt, count back around to make sure. I'm just trying, that's quite a tight one too. I'm just trying to get my hook in there, so double crochet. In that sti next stitch and then a double crochet back in to the same space. So just like the second round we're going to place two double crochet into each stitch. And that's what you will re repeat all the way around for round three. See the two there. So I'll meet you back once you've done that. Okay, so um, at the end of the third round, I'm going to slip stitch into the top of this chain. So one, two, three, third stitch there at the top. I'm going to make a quick slip stitch in the top there. ready for our next step. So we'll be working um, around the edges for, for this next part. Okay. Chain one. And then what I need you to do, just holding on to um, 
the loop on your hook there just to make sure it doesn't slip off. In the first stitch in the same space, this one here, we're going to make a slip stitch. If I can get my hook in. I do make my stitches quite tight sometimes. There we go. So not a single crochet, we're going to slip stitch all the way through. That's one, then the next stitch. Two. Three. Four. Fourteen slip stitches on this part of the circle. We're going to be looking at making the first ear. So we want to work in these stitches. We're going to skip um, those stitches and work into the next. So we're skipping two stitches. Skip that one, skip that one, and then work into the third. So we're working across three stitches here, but we're skipping the first two. We're going to make, oh, there we go, an extended double crochet. So that means rather than pulling over the two loops twice, we do it three times. So insert your hook, pull through one loop, then pull through two loops, then pull through the remaining two. So that's two made. Again, pull over one loop. Then pull over two, then pull over the last two. So that's our third one made. We want seven of these. That's four. And our last one in here, in the same space. Seven. And again, working across the next three stitches, we're going to skip the first two and work into the third stitch here. And we're just going to slip stitch to anchor that first ear down. Then we need to slip stitch across. So there's one, two, we're slip stitching across to the next ear. Three, four, five, six, oops, 
seven. There we go. So again, we're working across three stitches, but we're skipping the first two and we're working into the third. And we're going to make our first extended double crochet. So insert your hook, pick up a loop, yarn over the first loop, then yarn over the next two and yarn over for the next two. Okay, that's the first one, second one. Yarn over, pick up one, yarn over, pick up two, yarn over, whoops, pick up the last two. And again, we want seven double crochets in here for the second ear. So you're repeating the process. I really love working with this Egyptian cotton. It's a beautiful yarn, really nice quality. making this one in um, Egyptian cotton because I'm making another um, child's matinee jacket in cotton, Egyptian cotton, so I want the two uh, fibres to match. So again, um, wicking across the next three stitches, you skip the first two and then slip stitch into the third. And then you're going to slip stitch back around, and it's 15 stitches if I remember rightly. You're going to slip stitch around till you get to the beginning. I'm going to slip stitch into the first slip stitch there. It can be quite a, a firm stitch to slip into, uh, not quite as loose as a single crochet. It might just take a little bit of wiggling to get that slip stitch through. So that's the um, first part of the face made. I'm going to pull through um, a fair bit of yarn. I'm going to cut through a fair bit of yarn because uh, I want to sew this onto a garment later. So I need to make sure that I have plenty for sewing around the perimeter of the face. So I've got quite a bit here. Probably a good 40, 50 centimeters worth. Okay, so I'll just pull this through. Um, I want to finish up my ends here as well. And um, just to disguise my slip stitch a little bit, I'm, I'm going to sew that in. I'll just grab my darning needle. And all I do is I work in between the V's of the next stitch. So I go right down into the next stitch in between the V's and pull that through. 
and that sort of helps keep a nice even edge there. Looks quite neat. And then I, I don't I, I know I'm going to be sewing this onto a garment, but I, I don't want this coming apart. So I'll just weave very carefully so that my yarn doesn't come through the front of the applique. And then back through down to the other side there to the edge. And just being careful not to come through to the front. There we go. So while I'm working with the rest of the um, project, I can be certain that that will stay put at least anyway. Then I need to um, think about this loose end here where we started our magic ring or our, our th four chain, three chain loop. So I'm going to pull the uh, yarn a, a little tighter so, to, so I can close that hole up. And then I shall weave in quite a few times to make sure that that piece doesn't come loose. As I'm um, attaching this to a, a child's um, outfit, it will be washed obviously quite a few times. So. I don't want this coming loose in the wash, as with any of the ends that I weave in. So I'm just again picking up um, a few of the stitches, trying not to come through to the front of the project. Once I've done that, I'll just snip that off. Here we go. be looking at the next piece for the face in a second which we can add later I think um, I'm not quite sure what color I'll use for that uh, this is a much lighter it's almost verges on white this one if we go, I'll use the cream color okay so I'll pull out a little bit of yarn so this is the muzzle that we're going to be working on <clears throat> And it starts very much the same way as the, the face, using exactly the same hook size. Just line all the way in. So I'll make my slip knot. Or you could do a magic ring, it's up to you. I'll do a magic ring this time. Just to show you that they, the, the four chain loop and the magic ring work exactly the same. Oops, I'll try that again, I've lost my loop. <laughs> there we go, wrapping the yarn around my finger, hook underneath both pieces, pull through that working yarn. Through. There we go. And again, I'll be working over that tail, so it's exactly the same as the first method. Okay, so let's chain three, and we're going to double crochet into the center. That's one. Eleven, 
as well. So as I said, it worked up exactly the same as the beginning of the face. Pull up your loose piece of yarn, tighten that circle. There we go. And as we're we'll just double check it with your stitches here so that you know exactly where that first stitch is. And then you're going to slip stitch into the first double crochet, not the top of the chain, but the first double crochet. Ready for the second round, we're going to chain two this time and then into the same space we're going to make a half double crochet. So we're going to pull through all three loops on our hook. Okay, so that counts as having two half double crochets in that stitch. Moving on to the next stitch, we want half double crochet in there, like so. And then moving on to the next stitch, we want two half double crochets in there. Next stitch, and a half double crochet. So we start with two, one, two, one. Two. And that's our pattern all the way around. So it's two, one, two, one, two, one, all the way around. So you should have 18 half double crochets by the time you finish this round. Two in there. One in the next. Two in there, okay. and once you're done, because our first chain two was considered a half double crochet, we're going to slip stitch into the top of that first chain two. Is the end of that round. I'm snipping again a, a little bit of yarn off because we want to sew that muzzle onto the face when we're done. But for the moment we want to use our black yarn to um, draw the details on, sew the details on. And I'm just going to finish up my ends here like I did last time. size needle here. I was pulling my stitches a little bit. Uh, pulling the yarn a little bit. Okay, so back in between the next stitch, in between the two V's there. And that just closes up that space quite nice, nicely, keeps that nice and flat. Then I want to tidy up my loose thread here. Just pull on that a little bit to close the hole and then make a number of stitches through the through the yarn keep it nice and secure snip that off okay so that will go on to the face there roughly in the center 
normally do it just just a little bit below that second round just a tiny weeny bit and that's where I would place it but we need to do the features on the muzzle next so we'll have a look at that together So this um, cotton yarn is a little bit thicker. So I'm going to cut off plenty here. Got about, I'd, I'd say about 60, 60 centimeters roughly. So we're going to come from the back and put the needle through, just through one of the double crochet um, stitches. I'll leave a little piece at the back which can be tied off later. And then back through the middle. So you're coming from the back, sorry, from the back into one of the double crochet stitches and then back through from the front to the back middle there okay so that's the first first piece and then from from the back so I'll just keep that yarn out the way so I don't suck it in by accident from the back we're going to come up roughly here on the sort of it just on the edge of the double crochet that through and then we're going to go back through the center again we're going to end up making it up like a little bit of a Y shape so pulling that through there we go. so it's not quite straight it, there is a bit of a, an angle to those two pieces And then we're going to overlap that. So we're going to come back through from the back to the front and then straight back into the center again. rotate this around just a little bit we're going to come through the back and just through one of those double crochets here so this is uh, a little bit it's sort of perpendicular if you like to the first one that we did so that roughly comes straight roughly comes straight down not quite and then back through the center overlap that piece so it sort of looks a little bit like a, a Y and then back through the center again so we have a double layer of cotton there you could use embroidery thread or something like that as well something similar if you wanted to I'm not pulling too tight because I don't want to pull those double crochet stitches um, out of shape So then we're going to come back around to the far left hand side and from the back of our work come through another double crochet and through the front and we're going to double layer this one as well so once we've done this we'll come back through again 
from the back of the muzzle through to the front and then back through to the center. Go from the back. Through to the front and then back through that center. So just as I said before, don't tighten this yarn. You're going to pull the muzzle out of shape if you tighten that up too much. Just enough so that the um, yarn stays flat. So we need to work over the top of the little nose. So we're going um, through the back into the embroidered stitches that we made on the right hand side. And then I'm going to come across to the far left hand side. it straight I'm just with my finger I'm holding it up in a, a sort of a curved position there back through again to the right hand side working across to the far left and again just I'm not pulling it too tight not pulling it straight just with my thumb holding that up in a curved shape into the left hand side there from front to back and we're just building on this nose and those stitches will hold in place as you place one on top of the other okay back onto the right hand side so from the back of the work through to the front holding that down so I'm going to keep repeating this until I get the sort of the desired effect the desired shape that I want I'm certainly not an expert at embroidery, <laughs> but um, I can do the basics. I think the trick is placing your a needle in the right position. If you go between each of the double crochets, um, you tend to end up with sort of gaps in your work. But what I'm trying to do is pick up a tiny piece of the cotton as I go through. There we go, that's not too bad, is it? That looks quite cute. So I'm just going to snip a little piece of that off and then tie that off very carefully at the back. I'm not going to pull too tight because I don't want to pull those stitches out of place. So I'm just going to do a loose knot just to, to secure those two ends. Remember, this is going to be sewn onto the face, so you're not going to see this. There we go. Snip those extra pieces off. Give me that. Some new scissors. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'm going to stitch that onto my face. Stick that up 
way I can make my needle. There we go. Let's grab my darning needle. You could um, pin, pin this onto the face if you were worried about it moving about a bit, but um, I, I just tend to hold it firmly in place as I'm working. <clears throat> so You might need some pins, but that's, that's up to you. I'm just going to place it on here and hold it down with my thumb. Okay, so that's roughly where I want it. I'm trying to keep the little nose as straight as I possibly can and as cent central as I possibly can to the ears. And then the idea is I pick up a very small piece of the uh, caramel colour and go through the V's of those slips, you know, the, the half double crochet stitches. Again, picking up a little bit of the yarn and coming through the V. I'm not pulling too tightly again. I, I don't want to distort the stitches that I've made. I'm picking up a little bit of the caramel yarn and through the V of the stitches. This way, um, your work doesn't show through on the other side. So you end up with a nice clean attachment. Again, picking up some stitches. So I'm going to do that all the way around. Okay, so just coming up to um, the last couple of um, stitches here, back around from where I started. Once I'm satisfied that I've um, finished sewing that on, I will just weave the yarn through. Always being careful not to pull on the stitches or distort the shape of the stitches that I've made on the muzzle. Do that two or three times and then cut the yarn. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> So I'm going to use a bit more of the black yarn that I cut off earlier and I've got two pieces here, um, just cut those, I've just folded it in half, cut those in half and then each of those I'll fold again, I want them doubled over. So each is about a ruler's length, about 30 centimetres roughly. Just enough so that I can handle, it's not so short that I, I find it difficult to handle. And then I'm going to tie a fisherman's knot. I don't know if it's called a fisherman's knot, but fishermen do use this. You make a knot, wrap it round three times before pulling it closed. You could do it four times if you wanted a slightly bigger eye. We're working on the eyes here, sorry. <laughs> Pull that very carefully. Don't over tighten it, just push those edges together. And that gives you a little eye. There we go. It's great using that technique for closing off your work as well. Um, they are knots that just don't want to unravel. They're really secure. There we go. Next eye. So making a knot and wrapping that around three times. One, two, three. Pulling that very gently, squeezing those edges together a little bit. I'll just match those up to make sure they're approximately the same size. I don't want one bigger than the other. Just roughly the same size there. Push them together so that they're even. There we go. And then with your darning needle, you're going to thread each of these ends through. So I'll start with the first end. Thank you. 
needs it. I have a needle that's got a big enough eye in it for those two pieces to go through. There we go. So where you position these are up to you, but I roughly position it at the corners of the, of the nose, roughly. Just a little bit higher up, maybe, a little bit further across maybe. And I'm working into the caramel colour, the actual face, not the nozzle. And not between the double crochets, I'm actually working into a double crochet stitch so it splits the yarn. Um, that way the eye won't pop through. Just in here, I think. Very, very carefully, I don't want to tug that through and pull it all the way through. Take my needle off and then I need to do the same on the other side. So thread this piece up. I might just cut it, it might make that a little bit easier, I think. Oh gosh, if I twist those together that might make it a bit easier. as I possibly can but not on the same space pull, pull that piece through ever so carefully and there's your first eye made okay and you'll repeat the process for the other eye we'll tie those off at the end once we're done okay so just repeating the process with the other eye Once I have those in the right position, I will then tie them off. I won't tie, I won't tie them both off um, after I've, I've sewn them. I'll, I'll do them once I'm happy they're both in the position that I want, and then just cut them, cut the ends off like so. Oh, he's so cute! Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add either a little bow tie or a little bow. I've got plenty of yarn here for sewing onto a project as well, but I'm not quite finished yet going to um, add a little embellishment oh he'll, he'll look really cute against that granny square I've got a link for this granny square as well so click the link okay so there's the difference between the two the acrylic one on one side and the Egyptian cotton on the other I will match acrylic with acrylic and cotton with cotton. So the granny square that I did was acrylic, so I've used the acrylic um, teddy bear. I'm going to start working on the bow now. So it could be a bow tie or a bow for the hair, whichever way you want to um, think about it. We're going to make the bow for the teddy bear now. So this time I've used the um, slightly lighter uh, cotton. I'm going to put a slip knot on the hook and make our first chain, second chain, third chain. And then I'm going to make a double crochet into the first chain that I made there. And then a second double crochet. third double crochet chain one two three and then back into that same stitch we're going to slip stitch there you go so once we've done the slip stitch that's the first half of the bow done then we're going to chain one two three and in this stitch we're going to double crochet then we'll make another double crochet and a third double crochet there we go then chain one two three and slip stitch back into that space again 
here we go and then just cut um, a piece of yarn off so that you can sew that onto either the um, under the chin on the bear or or near the ears what I tend to do then is I, I um, pull on that uh, scrappy piece of yarn quite tightly and then wrap the uh, longer piece around two or three times pulling it quite tight before I then notch those two pieces together at the back and that just secures the little bow oh gosh <laughs> here we go pull that nice and tight stop that unraveling cut off the short piece and then keep the long piece to sew onto your project and there we have it that's really cute too so there's your teddy bear applique made with a hair bow or bow tie whichever you like oh i hope you really liked this um, and you had a bit of fun with this um, subscribe so you don't um, miss out on other videos and uh, don't forget to share this with others that you think might enjoy this and um, have, have fun. Thanks very much for watching.